Hey guys, welcome back to the Art and Business of Writing podcast. I am your host, Chris Jones, where I'm excited today to bring you Chef Charles Carroll, uh, who's the author of The Recipe, which is coming out very shortly. Um, if you remember from episode 53, I interviewed his co-author, John David Mann, who is also a six-time New York Times best-selling author. Well, Chef Charles is the guy who originated the story, and he's going to tell you a little bit about how he came up with the concept, what it's about, and why it's important. Um, He is an award-winning author himself of a book called Leadership Lessons from a Chef, Finding Time to be Great and Tasting Success, Your Guide to Becoming a Professional Chef. Uh, Chef Charles Carroll is currently the executive chef at River Oaks Country Club in Houston, Texas. Uh, River Oaks is the number four rated country club in the entire U.S., He's got just an extensive background in the culinary arts. Uh, He's also a member of the Team USA um, Olympic team. He's he's an Olympic chef, and he's going to talk about that too. Just so many cool things, so definitely um, take some notes. He's dropping a lot, a lot of knowledge in this episode. You're really going to enjoy it. Take notes. You're going to learn a lot from him. You're going to learn a lot about just dreaming, about goal setting, about planning, and about patience as a writer. So um, sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, and without further ado, here is my interview with Chef Charles Carroll. Chef Charles, thank you for joining me today on the Art and Business of Writing podcast. So so can you dive into your bio a little bit more? Uh, Sure, Chris, and thanks for having me. Uh, We... uh i uh, been uh, pretty busy over the last few years, but uh, I kind of grew up in a country inn and in Vermont. My dad was a chef, my brother was a chef, and, and anybody out there that owns their own business understands that uh, uh, when you're in a family business, you work eight days a week, and you know, in the second and third grade, you're shoveling sidewalks and stocking fireplaces and bars and running food around the building. So that was kind of how I grew up. and. And I went to the Balsams Grand Resort Hotel. It was a, it was a um, three, uh, three-star uh, resort, and um, uh, that's kind of where I cut my teeth a little bit. Went to the Colony Institute of America, and then went back to the Balsams. Um, and um, and I was there for quite a while as a chef. And, and uh, Oak Hill Country Club in Rochester, New York, and now down here in Houston the last 17 years. So along the way, I competed on a few Olympic teams and. Went to Afghanistan and done a bunch of fun stuff and been blessed. Wow, that's amazing. So, how are things in Houston these days? I know you know we've you know we had Harvey a little bit ago. Like, how how did that uh, affect everything that kind of you're into right now? How is things down there? Yeah, well, you're right, and and uh, it, it, it's it's about as emotional as you see on TV. Um, it, uh, it it's going to to be honest, it's going really well now. I mean, we got a long long ways to go to rebuild. We had 30 employees that were seriously infected uh, affected by the by the uh, storm and 11 of them that we would categorize as catastrophic um, and uh, so you know we were working hard on getting them back on their feet the club is okay um, the golf course is is going to be damaged probably till you know three or four holes until uh, next April probably but in, in the long scheme of things we're, you know we're, we're pretty um, fortunate um, uh, the way things worked out. So we're just trying to help our people get back on their feet and, the, and actually the clubs around us as well. Wow, man, that's just, it's amazing. But it was great to see, it was great to see everybody pull together, you know, to help one another to, you know, make sure that people were safe and warm and clothed. So, I mean, just kudos to Houston, man, for just showing a lot of human spirit. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was um, you know, it was really emotional. I mean, we were, you know, we didn't have water damage. Well, we had a, we had some leaks at our house, but, but uh, we didn't get flooded and, but we were flooded in. Uh, we couldn't get out and there's nobody could get in. So that was probably the hardest part is when during the heart of the storm, we had friends that were getting affected and we couldn't do anything about it. So, um, but yeah, everybody's pulling together. We were doing family meals for, for all our people for about a week. We were sending a hundred meals out. Uh, every day uh, for the first week to, for the first responders and and uh, yeah it's pretty special it's it's um, wow. everybody helping each other. Now you said you were an Olympic chef. Now tell us exactly what an Olympic chef is and and how you become one. <laughs> well, uh, I uh, you know when I was my dad's a culinary instructor he was back in the day and and he showed an Olympic video of these chefs competing and the World Culinary Olympics is in Germ held in Germany every every four years and it can be related to the sports olympics um so uh it's a lot of work it's a lot of training so when i say 
when I say can, can be compared to, you know, you're working 60 or 70 hours in your real job and then you're working another 20 or 30 hours on, on your on your competition um, production and food and studying and that kind of thing. And um, uh, so you compete regionally and nationally and then you work your way, you try to get yourself onto an Olympic team and then, and then, um, and then basically you travel and, and you compete all over the world and, and get ready for the big show, which is in Germany every four years. So um, it's a lot of work. It's a, uh, but it, you know, I've been a, a part of eight different teams and it's been a big part of my life uh, as far as who I am and how I cook and, and how I build teams. It's, it's a great, uh, it's an amazing amount of life lessons. It's really awesome. Yeah, I had not heard of the Culinary Olympics until I, you know, got in your bio and I talked to John, and I was like, man, I, this is amazing. Like, so what? What comprises a, a team of culinarians for the Olympics? Do you guys like? Is it like baking and cooking and like? What are some of the some of the different, I guess, culinarians that go into creating a team? Sure. Yeah. Well, there's, there's usually on the on the on the national team. The national team, I mean, is is the number one team that represents the United States. There's there's a lot of individuals that compete or regional teams, but the one that that competes on the national level, which means you go against all the other countries, uh, is made up of five team chefs and, and a manager. And uh, there's usually four four team chefs or four savory chefs and, and then one pastry chef. And uh, you compete in a cold food category, which is usually kind of a buffet kind of style presentations. But it's food like you can't even imagine. It's it's it looks like it, it's it's magazine picturesque, amazing, modern, cutting edge, uh, beautiful looking. If you Google uh, culinary Olympics or, or competition food, you you can see some pretty amazing pictures. And then and then we have uh, the hot food competition, which is real live restaurant situation. And uh, usually feed around 100, 100 people um, a three or four course meal in a four hour time period from from scratch, and that's pretty intense competition. Wow, I, I can't even imagine. But it, I mean, it sounds like a lot of fun, but it sounds like a lot of pressure too. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, I mean, I, you know, the benefit. I mean, a a I'm 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 tenfold the chef than I would have been if I hadn't competed, and and uh, you know, it's a grind. You know, it's a and. and it's a major league grind and, and it has an effect on you uh in your work possibly your family i mean it, it's it's a lot of hours it's, it, it's like anything chris wouldn't uh that you're that you strive to be or want to be great at it, it, you know you have to put time into it and but probably the beauty behind the whole thing is is the camaraderie and the friendships that uh, you know when you go through battle uh with you know and you achieve something together as as uh, as a team uh, it's it's amazing friendships for life that you 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 get out of it, and that's that's really uh, that's a that's a bloodline of, of of friendship that's pretty special. No, that's that's really cool. But I, I like that you talked about how it made you tenfold the chef. I think competition definitely uh, makes us better. And I want to roll into you know the whole idea of the book, you know the recipe. Like, how did why did you decide that you wanted to you know write a book? Well, this is my third book, actually. Uh, I have I have two other books, so Leadership Lessons from a Chef, Finding Time to Be Great, and that was written uh, on how to build teams, and that was a whole story on how that, that was my first one, and and uh, and, and that's and that one, and then Tasting Success, uh, Your Guide to Becoming a Chef, both of those books are being used in over 40 uh, hospitality schools uh, around the country and parts of the world, actually, as well, and um and so then the third book I, I actually started seven years ago, and I wanted to have fun. You know, I wanted to dream. I wanted to, I wanted to tell a story. I want to touch people's hearts and make a difference in how they think. You know, and and inspire them that way. And and uh, so I did that and kind of just poured from the heart. And then, you know, it's a great story with John. John David Ban is is one of the most talented writers in the country today. Is seven time uh, national best selling author and. So I'm really blessed to be with him, and uh, so I I read one of his books, and I happened to see him drinking a cup of coffee uh, at my dining room table one morning on on a Sunday, and I saw him on Facebook, and I just pinged him and, and said, "Hey, I love your book," and he responded, <laughs> he answered back, and so I pinged again, and and the next thing I know, I sent him my two books, and I said, "Hey, by the way, I have this idea, uh, would you take a look at it?" And he said, "Sure," and uh, so I sent him the book, and. And um, and that's an amazing story to all your listeners out there, Chris. I mean, I mean, my, my whole life is is made of stuff like that. 
um, willing to jump off the cliff and do whatever it takes to be successful, to re, you know, to be to not be afraid to make that jump to reach out or network. And then, you know, I've been blessed to accomplish so many crazy things in my life, but it's been by busting your tail and, and, and jumping. So, so that was a start of it. And once I got John on board, you know, uh, I had to, you know, it took us seven years to, to, uh, match our and line up our schedules. And, uh, but I didn't want to, I, I he was definitely the guy, um, to partner with on this because he's the best. And so I waited and, and, uh, here we are and it comes out just in a couple of weeks. So we're, we're pretty excited. That's a great testimony of patience, though. Just you know, finding the guy that you wanted specifically, and then being willing to wait until your schedules align to put the book out. Because I know writing books, you know, we can get a little antsy and like, oh, I gotta get mm. this book out. I want it to be out. I want the market to have it. But I, I mean, I love how you talked about waiting for John. Like, did you ever have anxious moments? Like, Man, should I just do this now or should mm. I wait? I mean, did you ever have those or struggle with that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, because I had other people that were interested in the project, and and I, I wrote this interesting enough, uh, Chris. That that I, I wanted to, from day one, I wanted to become a movie, and and like I said before, I'm a big dreamer, you know, and um, and so I had another guy that wanted to do it, and he would have done a fantastic job too. Um, but he's not John Mann, and and so there was a time I I think after maybe year five and a half or six I said John I think I I might have to move on, just because I was getting a little antsy, and 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 John believed in the pro- project so much I mean he had a lot of big things on his plate and and uh, he said okay I, I, we're gonna do this and I said okay I'll wait then because uh, as long as you know in your heart we're gonna do it I'll wait because that was the right decision and and to be honest Chris we have. It's in it's in front of uh, four different uh, producers, but we have one producer that is genuinely 100 uh, percent interested in this project as, as becoming a movie, and and I just feel I feel as good about this as anything I've ever felt. So I just because of the relationship uh, I've uh, I've been able to kindle over the last few weeks. So I we're really excited. This is a good time for us. No, that's fantastic. And I want you to unpack that for us a little bit. Just the whole mindset of um, taking something that you believe in, like your book, and starting with mm-hmm. the end, you know, the end game of it. I want it to be a movie mm-hmm. and then watching it manifest into that. Can you talk about like your mental process in doing that? Because I think a lot of authors, I think we caught we, we, we want those sort of things, but we're not sure how to go about it. But it seems like from from where you stand, it was something that you believed in and you really pushed your book mm. to become. And can you talk about that? Sure. You know what? You know what, Chris? Uh, it's the power of networking. Never take yourself uh, for granted or any or any of your friends or your network for granted. I mean, <clears throat> I could tell you a hundred stories on this. You know, when I was trying to get my first book published, I sent it to a total of 70 different publishers um, over a period of, I don't know, six or eight weeks. And I was so frustrated and I, and I was telling a buddy of mine, you know, this really sucks, you know? And he says, Charles, why don't you just talk to the authors, you know? I said, I don't know any authors. He said, sure you do. Think about it. And he named off four or five. And I said, oh my gosh, I can't believe I, I wasn't even thinking that way. You're thinking one dimensional, you know, waiting to get somebody else to publish a book for you. And so, yeah, so that was a lesson and I reached out to them and they said, sure. So in th- that, that story gets more amazing as, as it goes, but I actually would end up giving a presentation at the American Colony Federation and there were three publishers in the audience and the audience was packed and it just happened to be one of my best presentations ever and they saw each other in the audience and they said well we better sign this guy because that's what everybody's here for and it was all kind of a fluke but that's how it started and and um, and just yesterday you know I'm, I'm working on a project with my daughter and it's a kids book and um, she's a first grade teacher and so I reached out to LinkedIn and, and Facebook. Does anybody know a uh, children's author or a, or a publisher, a children's publisher? And I got a total of 14 responses of, of connections. And within, you know, I posted that first thing in the morning, and I got the answers by lunchtime. And I made contact already, I think, with three of them. Um, that's the power of, of, of and you know, if... if I honestly believe, Chris, that we all we all have this thing inside us that we're we're supposed to find, we're, it, it, and it's our obligation to find it. A lot of people never find it. A lot of people are scared to find it. A lot of people know what it is, but they're just scared to make that jump. They they allow their their job to get in the way of their dreams, or or their 
or the responsibilities or families. I get it. I, I'm right there with you. But I know as sure as I'm sitting here today that if you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, uh, you can make things happen. And um, so and that's how this book deal, and I, I've been telling people, and this is another thing too. I'm sorry this is a long-winded answer. But, but uh, you know, when I put something in my calendar, I, I consider it a, a contract with myself. I'm going to, just like we're speaking here this morning, that we're going to do that no matter how busy I am. I said I'm going to do it, so it's a contract. I'm going to do it. So whether it be in a speaking engagement or a meeting um, or, or what have you. So, so you got to push yourself, you know, and, 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 uh, and, you know, if you're on an airplane, don't get caught up in all the movies, you know, read something learn something write a note to somebody save you know those kinds of things take advantage when you wake up in the morning have a cup of coffee line your day up and start dreaming right away and uh and so i started uh you know telling everybody this is going to become a movie i know and i started thinking about my network who do i know and then you start once you start talking to one person you learn something else and you learned about another person then you get an introduction um and that's why the book is currently in front of four um uh, uh, uh uh, producers right now and the one and the one the most amazing thing uh the one that well i i guess i can't i can't tell you any more about it right now but it, it's amazing how it's so connected that's why I, I feel so good about it hopefully i'll come back on your show i tell you what when we sign the deal i'll come back on your show and i'll tell you all about it <laughs> oh no yeah well, i'll definitely have you back what yeah once you ink the deal you send me an email <laughs> and i'll i'll have you right back on <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool i mean i i just believe in that so much you know yeah, no, it, it's a fantastic story, and I think it's a great testament uh, to, to dreaming and really believing in your work, uh, that your work is special, that your work has a place, uh, you know, where you want it to have a place. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that you shared it. No, it wasn't long-winded at all. I felt like it was a, just a great education for authors who, you know, who do great work and really deserve, you know, deserve to see more from their work if they really want it to be more. Mm -hmm. um, now, tell me about the book a little bit. Like, wh how did the story concept originate? Well, you know, I grew up in Vermont, and um, and so the scene of the book is in New England, and, and particularly St. Johnsbury, Vermont, because that's where I grew up. I went to the St. Johnsbury Academy there, and my dad was an instructor there. So um, the father in the in the book was a uh, was a teacher at the local school, and and um, the chef, uh, the crusty old diner chef, uh, you know, is is my dad used to own a diner, and it's and it's described exactly in there as I remember it. Um, so that's how that scene became there, and and I've done some work with the military um, in Afghanistan, and and so that's why the the chef happens to be a retired uh, military guy, and um, uh, so you know you know that the 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 line of the story goes is that the you know the boy loses his Owen loses his dad at a very young age, and he's mad at the world, mad at God, and and um, so he s starts getting himself in a bunch of trouble and, and spiraling down and. And so this uh, uh, diner chef, crusty old military chef, uh, uh, sees this, and he's a friend of his, his dad who just passed, and reaches out, pulls him in, and, and starts uh, mentoring him. So each chapter is, is a life lesson, and each chapter they cook something. And that's what makes a story so beautiful, because food uh, has so many intertwines with, with life, you know, and the patience to cook. and. And you you know you plant a seed and you fertilize and you water and you and you you nurture uh, uh, the, that product that that vegetable to grow and then you wait for the right time and then you harvest it and then you clean it so I mean it's it's patience and it's in its um in its life and having having respect and for the product and respect for food and and, and it's just a beautiful roller coaster um, uh, story. No, I, I like that. I love the concept because, you know, they always say the kitchen is where the conversations happen. You know, when people come and gather uh, at each other's houses to hang out and do things, everyone always gravitates towards the kitchen. Yeah, that's exactly so it's, right. It, yeah. it, it's, it's a great thing. Um, so also when I was talking to John, we had a really good laugh just about the whole concept of moving into self-publishing because he said, you know, he's talking to his agent. He's like, wow, this book's fantastic. Everyone's going to be beating down your doors. And then it was just, you know, it was crickets because they couldn't figure out how to how to categorize right. it. Like for you, um, were you stunned that it was re like that the publishers just couldn't take it or wouldn't take it because they couldn't figure out what to do with the book? Uh, yeah, a little bit because John is so amazing and well known and, and so successful. And, um, 
and so yeah we had big dreams for it but uh on the other hand i'm okay with it because because what dr seuss got rejected how many times 50 times or and there's so many other other famous authors out there you know of even the go-giver uh which is close to a million million books in sales now i mean that was rejected you know uh, many many times and and so the reason why i'm so excited about this is is, it's kind of like putting that thing in the calendar or or, if i keep i keep saying it over and over and over again hey this is going to be a a a bestseller this is going to be an amazing book this will become a movie because i know it's going to be and it but it's not going to happen by itself it's going to be doing things like we're doing today and, and me constantly pushing it um so the reason why i'm okay with it is is john and i are more invested in the project and now that this um, uh, book has movie interests, we own the, the rights to the book. So that's that's a real benefit. Uh, and um, and like I said, I I've never felt more because of this last meeting I had last week. I never felt better about anything. Uh, I really think it's going to happen now. So we're blessed that that we own the we own the book. We own the rights to it. And that's my actually my next question. Just what were some of the lessons and takeaways from diving into self publishing that helped you guys propel the book or helped you get the book to where you want it to be? Well, you know, John is the pro. You know, John John is the pro writer. I'm the pro dreamer. You know, I had the story and, and I had the story in black and white and then John turned it into high def widescreen and and surround sound. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and so so John is the guy and he and he's taking it on as a you know, it's a learning curve for him too. So we all grow from this. Um, um, so I'm the chef, you know, and we've done some videos, some awesome videos that, of us cooking that we're going to use for bonus material for anybody who purchases the book before October 17th. And and so I have some different stages to be on as a speaker, uh, uh, just recently past president of the World Association of Chef Society. That's 105 countries and 10 million chefs and traveling the world and, and uh, speaking at, at all over the country and kind of a... Uh, leadership uh, inspirational pieces that that I do um, so I'm doing that work on that side and John is is doing the self-publishing stuff on his side and and he's he he coaches me on where I need to be and when you know what to do and 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 uh, so it's been fun for both of us yeah and, and unpack that a little bit for me too tell me what is it like for an author to work with a collaborator you know in case there are people who are listening who are considering writing books but you know, aren't sure about their own skill level. What's it like to work with an author collaborator? Well, you know, I'm you know, like I keep saying, I'm blessed. But um, you know, John's a John's amazing. I mean, so so here's a guy who's uh, you know, he's a book geek. You know, he's a writer geek. I mean, this is his real. This is his his life's job. Um, uh, this is what makes him jump out of bed in the morning. I my job is is at a country club and. Houston and and uh, working 70 hours a week and doing all these other side projects um, so my 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 advice to you would be make sure you find somebody that ha- is as passionate about it as you are not someone who's doing it for the money um, or, or, or whatever sidebar they need to do it because man this is great man I'm just they're doing it because it's they're now vested in the project John loves food and uh, I, I joked that I said John. The only reason why John agreed to this is because he knew he was going to eat well the next couple of years. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> w- when John and I uh, met, uh, or you know, through Facebook, I had a few phone conversations. I, I sent, I put, I put a box together and put my books in it and uh, the the manuscript, and then I put a, a bottle of truffle oil in there and and uh, and some dried pasta and a, and a small recipe, and I boxed it all up and sent it off to him, you know, because he's a foodie, you know, and. And so when I'm describing the food or we were writing together, you know, John would call me in the middle of, you know, in the middle of the night or somewhere, 10 o'clock at night, and he'd say, hey, I'm having a hard time with this egg because he's trying to do it just like I told him how to do it. And so, so that would be the lesson there would be make sure you get somebody who's not doing it for the, for, to punch in and punch out and get a paycheck. Do it, you know, find that person, you know, if it's about the military that knows something about military or has a passion about history or what you get the idea. Right. No, that's really cool. And so in terms of like uh, with writing together, how did you guys uh, kind of come up with your system of writing together? Well, uh, like I said, I had the first eight or nine chapters, but, you know, they were just a bunch of notes. Well, I mean, they're a chapter in my mind, but they were they were 80 or 90 pages. 
and then uh, and so we collaborated. John came down here. We had a, we had meetings, and then we had several interviews uh, via phone um, uh, as he's lining it all up, and and uh, then he just he just put all the pieces back together again. So, and again, I, I you know I had the background story, but but John's the one that you know. It, that just turned it into this widescreen marvel. I mean, he's an amazing writer. So, so, uh, and then he would send me a chapter or two as we go and, and I would read it and, and, um, and we would make sure we get a lot of comments on our launch team that people say, well, I, I love it so much cause it's so real. You know, I feel like I'm standing in the kitchen or I can hear the pots and pans or, or I didn't know this about food or I didn't know this about this particular recipe or so it's, it's real. And it's kind of like, that's why I'm excited about the movie too, because you know if you think about how many food movies there are out there, or how many cool food movies there are, there's probably four or five. You know, Julia, Julia, uh, you had Ratatouille, um, the Hundred Foot Journey, I thought was pretty awesome, um, and the new one, Chef, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so it's real in that respect, um, where and so I think that's why we're going to have so much fun creating the movie because it's going to be real and it's going to relate to life. No, that's really cool. And I, I love how you talked about really how John brought it to life with just making people feel like they're experiencing, you know, what you're teaching in the mm-hmm. book firsthand. Yeah. I think it's very important to have those sort of visuals or for an author to be able to paint that sort of a picture for the reader. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's the man. He's the he's why I waited. <laughs> <laughs> and for all of our listeners, if you want to check out uh, John David Mann's interview, his with, his with episode number 52, where he talks about uh, working with Chef Carol to develop the book, The Recipe, the one we're talking about right now. And speaking of which, so um, before we close out, can you tell our listeners how they can get their hands on a copy of The Recipe? Yeah, sure. Um, they can uh, they can go to my website, chefcharlescarroll.com, chefcharlescarroll, C-A-R-R-O-L-L.com. Or uh, the ingredients of greatness.com, the ingredients of greatness.com, <clears throat> and uh, also John's website. So, but that's uh, pretty easy to uh, pretty easy to get to, and it's coming right out uh, October seventeenth. So, um, it, it's it's going to be fun, and keep your ear to the ground. And what what we loved so much about it is when people read it, the launch team read it. It was like two hundred people. They said uh, what they loved about it is is it stayed with them for two or three weeks after, and that's. And I think that's probably the biggest compliment for me. Oh wow! No, that that is that's a, that's a great testament uh, to you as a as a storyteller. Um, and you also said you have some bonus materials. Is there a way for readers to access the bonus materials? Is there something they have? Yeah, to do to if you those? go onto the ingredients of greatness, it guides you through it. Um, Ingredientsofgreatness.com, and uh, it's going to be those those cooking. Do- uh, so John and I are cooking in the kitchen, and um, and we talk about why the recipe was in this story, and we cook the 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 dish right there and you know on, on the video and kind of talk you through it but also give you the kind of the behind the curtain um, uh, ideas and concepts uh, about the story and why the recipe is there oh very cool and will there be any kind of social media component to it where you know people who can try the recipes and share them with you guys or yeah well so if you buy the book before the 17th they can get they'll get those videos automatically and then after that um, we're going to figure out a way I think there's going to be I think there's also going to be a an interview with John and I about about the whole how the whole thing happened and how the story it's it's not it's not a story about me but it's a story about a lot of things that I've experienced in life and and what those things are so um, yeah we'll have we're gonna have all that awesome and uh, it was great talking to you today uh, chef Charles I'm looking forward to hearing more about kind of where the where the book goes you know the movie the whole shebang so it's really exciting and I love uh, just that visionary spirit that you have just the way that it's carried you through your career but also the way that it's carried you through this book well I appreciate that and I just think I just encourage that encourage your listeners just to don't be afraid to jump and and don't stop I mean enjoy the journey whatever it is you want you have in your heart and that you want to do dare and you know, first dream about it and d- let yourself dream about it and then go ahead and jump and then once you jump be okay with the process. Be okay with the journey because I'm doing stuff, you know, this month that I wasn't even dreaming about in January. So my, my journey's changed. So if you're dreaming about something and it's a number one all the way over on the left-hand side and four or five months later it's a number five or seven or eight and it's all the way over on the right-hand side, it looks totally different from when your original dream, that's okay. Be okay with it. It's just guiding you on what it's really supposed to be. So just be okay with the journey and, 
and just keep pushing. Awesome. And then one last thing I would like for you just to share with our audience before you take off is really talk about the, the power of asking for things. Like you talked about going through your network, through LinkedIn, and just asking people questions. Uh, can you just share why why that's so important to not be afraid to ask for things you want? I mean, listen, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, that's why you have a network. And, and, and you got to think outside the box because that's how I wrote the first book. That's how I got you know in with John Mann. I, I um, I'm doing a podcast right now, and and uh, you know I didn't know how to do a podcast, and 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 two three months later we you know I have to talk to people like you. You're a very successful guy in this market, so how do you do it? You know, so that that's now up and running. You know, it's the recipe podcast, pretty cool. And, but you know, what do I know about movies? Nothing. But but uh, twenty or thirty reach outs and 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 emails and hey, what about do you know somebody? And next thing you know, I, I'm really close to signing something. And we're working on a TV show. You know, what do I know about TV shows? Absolutely nothing. I'm a chef by trade. You know, I, and, and, uh, and now 80 meetings later, uh, you know, I, were, I talk to people from NBC here. I've talked to people from, you know, local, local channels here. <clears throat> and I've had three, four meetings with them. And I thought I wanted to be local. But now after those meetings, we said, no, we want this thing to be a national thing. So I talked to a buddy of mine in L.A., then he knew a, a producer. So, I, so what my point is, is I knew nothing about almost all of these projects that I'm doing. Afghanistan, I don't know. How do you put on a show in Afghanistan? You know, I know nothing about that. But it's just the will to know. It's the will to learn and be okay with it. So, so you know, don't just sit on the couch and say, I wish I could do that or I wish I could do this. You know, you know, get off your ass and do something about it. If you, if you say you want to do something, be committed to it and keep pushing and be okay with the, pro- with the process and where that road takes you because it's going to, if you don't stop, it's going to keep turning and turning and turning until it's successful and, and just have fun with it. And that's, that's the story of my life, really. Wow, what a powerful way to end. Chef Charles Carroll, thank you so much for joining me uh, today. It's my pleasure, Chris, and thank you for having me on.